Hello everyone and welcome to Her Lifestyle Travel. My name is Natoya and I'm here to help you start budget traveling. So this video is meant for all of my 30 something year old newbie travelers that you might be a little bit nervous about taking your first international trip. This video is for you. I have 10 steps that you can take to get over your nerves and start international traveling. Before we begin, make sure you download my ultimate checklist to help you book your first international trip. It's in the description below. So I, I was inspired to do this video because my older sister, she's now traveling with me all the time. We're in Croatia right now. And we're gonna be in Europe for three months. Um, it was supposed to be six, but we're like, let's just do three. <laughs> so she started traveling in her 30s and she was so nervous about it. So that's what inspired me to do this video. So let's get started. So the first thing you need to do is to plan ahead. Give yourself so much time to get it right, <laughs> to book, the, to plan the perfect trip for you, to know exactly what you want, to do research, to save money, to earn a little bit extra money, whatever you need to do, just give yourself enough time. I recommend it to have between three to six months to start prepping between three to six months before your desired um, travel date. Trust me, the worst thing you can do is rush this, um, book somewhere, book an Airbnb that you don't like, book a destination you don't like. That, that's the worst thing you can do. Just be gentle with yourself and give yourself enough time to plan this all out. All right, number two, the next thing you need to do is to just have in mind that this is your first trip abroad and you don't want to spend too much time. You don't want to have a long trip. So for example, my first solo trip without my friends and family abroad was to Sri Lanka and I went for a month. That was crazy. <laughs> I went to Sri Lanka for a month all by myself. I showed up at the airport all by myself. There was no one. I don't know what made me do it, <laughs> but um, it worked out great. Um, I got over my solo, my solo travel fears, like I had to, it was a whole month, so it worked out great. But I would not recommend going somewhere for a whole month if that's your first international trip. I recommend five to seven days. You don't wanna shock your system and feel like you never wanna do this again. Because the way cultural shock works is that you go through different waves of emotions and everyone is different. But I find that the longer that I'm in a country, the more kind of emotional stress it is for me. This is just me. But I find that it, the emotion, it's a lot of emotional stress because I'm going through the waves of culture shock. But usually when you get to a country, it's just so exciting. You're just so happy to be there. You might not have that negative initial, initial experience. And just to note, culture shock doesn't mean that you're having a terrible time or the country that you're in, like the culture is sucks, sucks or is harsh. It's, it's nothing about that. It's just an, kind of like an emotional change and you're just dealing with everything being different. You're in a new place. So don't be scared of culture shock. It's very normal and everyone goes through culture shock. It might be super duper mild, but everyone goes through culture shock. But I'm telling you, <laughs> do not book a trip too long because you want to just, not freak yourself out, not stress yourself out. Number three, the next thing you need to do is to pick the perfect destination. That's why I said in the first example, you need to do your research. Pick a destination where you, you from the food, you're interested in the food, you're interested in the activities, you're interested in the language. Pick a location where you're interested in the overall culture. And with that said, pick a location where the culture won't, won't, be, won't stress you out. <laughs> so for example, a culture that's completely different from yours might be a shock to your system and it might be a stressful experience. So for example, I have lived in Japan and I love Japan. Um, as soon as Japan opens back up, I would, I'm definitely going back to Japan for at least a month. But with that said, I do not recommend Japan as a first international destination because the language is difficult. Yes, there's a lot of things in English. The culture is very different. The foods are different. I just feel like it would shock the typical, the typical American um, that's never left the country. So what I would recommend for a first international destination is somewhere that's like well-traveled, like Paris, Madrid, or even Puerto Rico, 
somewhere that's well-traveled that you won't feel that you are somewhat familiar with because of your experience right here in America. So guys, be sure to do lots of research. And if you need help picking your first destination, I created a video, I'll link it above, to the eight steps you can take to pick your first international destination. So now that you have your international destination, your perfect international destination, you need to get your mind ready. You need to get yourself ready and into that like tourist mind space. So you need to be a tourist in your city. So go to the museums, visit the tourist sites, go go to the movies, just do, just do touristy things in your own city. After you do that, now it's time to act, take an actual trip by yourself. So I could recommend taking a one to two day trip by yourself to a, to a nearby city or to a city or even three hours away, it doesn't matter. Just take a trip to a city by yourself and do the touristy thing. Get yourself ready to be a tourist. Go to the different sites, go to the museums, do all the touristy stuff. This is gonna help you prepare for when you're abroad and alone. Number six, the next thing you need to do is to book travel insurance. Protect yourself while you're abroad. Like I say, say in all my videos that I talk about travel insurance, travel insurance is not only about if you have a severe injury, like you break a leg. Travel insurance also about flight, flight cancellation, lost baggage, um, if you get something like an ear infection or a sinus infection, whatever, it'll cover all of those things. And there's just something so calming about having travel insurance, know that, knowing that you have travel insurance. So I highly recommend that you get travel insurance. You can use a World Nomads. I've been using them for years. Or you can use a search engine, insur insuremytrip.com to find many different travel insurances in your budget and to fit your needs. So number seven, the next thing you need to do is to sign up to the Smart Traveler Enrollment Program. So basically what this is, is just essentially you telling the United States government, here's where I am, here's where I am in the world. If anything happens, Here's where I am, come get me. You're just letting the government know where you are in the country and where to find you if something happens. So this is another thing that I recommend to help you sleep at night. All right, number eight, the next thing you need to do is to create a rough plan, itinerary, have something to look forward to. Well, so just create a rough plan. Like for example, if you're in Paris, okay, day two, I'm gonna go, go to the, spend, the, spend the day at the Louvre. Day three, I'm going to uh, take a riverboat tour. Therefore, I'm just gonna do, I'm gonna do a tour of um, the bakeries in the neighborhood or whatever, whatever is your thing. Because when you have a plan, it gives you a peace of mind and something to look forward to. And it just makes you feel organized and just in control of your trip. All right, number nine, the next thing you can do is to get support. Join Facebook groups. My favorite Facebook group is Girls Love Travel. Actually, yes. Girls of Travel is my fa favorite Facebook group. It's just so inspiring to see women from all over the world traveling. And then you can ask questions, uh, get advice from other travelers, uh, and just be overall inspired to travel. So you can do that. You can follow influence, travel influencers on uh, Instagram. You can ask me questions. You can DM, DM me on Instagram. Whatever you decide to do, just get support from other female travelers and know that you're not alone, that you're not the first per, first woman to travel solo or just to travel internationally with a group of friends and that you need support. And of course, with that said, be sure to get advice and recommendations from people that are in that specific location or people that um, have traveled there, like from blog posts, uh, YouTube videos. Just reach out, reach out to people so that you can prepare yourself for the trip. So the very last thing that you can do is to inform your friends and family about the where your whereabouts, where you're staying, message, text them or email them your accommodation address, the phone number, if there's a phone num number to the hotel, let them, give them your itinerary that you created and let them know, you know what, on Monday, this is what I'm doing, on Tuesday, this is what I'm doing. Let them know when your flight is landing, when you're leaving, just give them a, a rough, guide or outline of what you're what you'll be doing and where you'll be having someone back home knowing where you, your whereabouts gives you a sense of peace so when i first started traveling i would always 
met message my mother or my sister or whoever at least one person uh, the location of where i where i am where my airbnb is uh, because it made them feel like they had some sort of control in case something happened and it made me feel like okay in case something does happen i know that they can come find me because this because they know my location so just send them the rough itinerary even your tour if you book if you booked a tour let them know that you know what i booked a tour for tuesday we're, meet, we're meeting up at this location and we're ending at that location whatever it is just send them as much information as you can have a specific time that you're calling someone back home you just need to call one person just have a specific time that you're calling to check in so that they, they can know that you're okay for example you can decide to call your sister just make sure you're consistent with that call and make sure you're consistent with the time you call her because if you miss a call they're gonna freak out <laughs> so just make sure you're consistent with the calls back home all right guys so i really hope this video helped you if you're in your 30s and you're now starting your journey as a solo traveler or just traveling internationally be sure to comment in the description and let me know where you're interested in going and any questions you'll have. Of course, don't forget to like this video, hit the bell notification for upcoming videos. Bye!